So how can a new Muslim deal with the issue of Christmas? Because growing up in America, coming from a non-Muslim background, this is one of the number one questions and one of the most challenging things to deal with in the beginning for a new Muslim. Growing up, Christmas is like the one time of year that you look forward to. It's like you get presents, the family comes together, you're off school, people are off work. It's just something that is we are brought up with. And even though Sneeko, for example, he mentions that his family, they're not even like practicing Christians, but it's still, it's like when you become Muslim, you take religion seriously now. You know, you really think about what you do and the implications of it. So when it comes to Christmas, you know, I just wanted to share my experience as somebody who became Muslim 15 years ago. The first thing I'd really like to highlight for a new Muslim is progress rather than perfection. Because Islam is a marathon, life is a marathon, it is impossible to embrace Islam and then do everything perfectly. It is impossible. You can't even learn everything. <laughs> you know, like there are so many things that you're going to do as a new Muslim that you didn't realize was wrong. Like that's just, it, it takes time. So one thing to really focus on in the beginning is progress. You might not be perfect. You might not be doing everything correctly. However, you should be improving. You should be getting closer and closer to what you are you know, supposed to be doing rather than further away. And I say that because although you're not going to do everything perfectly in the beginning, you, sh you, you should still, which he obviously has, you should have a sort of discomfort with doing things that you know are wrong, right? If somebody's maybe for the first year or two after becoming Muslim, you know, for example, that's what I did. I, I still attended certain, certain family functions that I was uncomfortable with because I know that they had a, a pagan background or they come from some religion that is contrary to my beliefs as a Muslim. But, you know, I, I wasn't really sure how to go about it because I was young, I was a new Muslim, I'm still learning, I don't want to burn bridges with my family. And part of me obviously still wants to attend these events. You know, like if it's the most joyous time of the year for, for you to spend with your family, that's gonna be very difficult to cut yourself off from that. However, at the same time, that doesn't make it right. That's why Faris has explained to him. I mean, there, there is basically a, a ruling in Islam about you know, celebrating certain things or going to certain functions in general. But then there is the actual practicality of a specific human being who's a new Muslim, who comes from a certain culture, you know, implementing that. But it's very important to understand what Islam truly says about it and submit to it because that's what Islam is. Islam is submission, submitting to the truth, submitting to what Allah wants from us. So, and that's what I mean by progress. If you can at least accept that, and have the goal to, you know, move in that direction towards implementing Islam better, then that is so much better than trying to justify things and make, making the haram halal. That's one of the worst things that you can do. And when I've seen people do that, that's when they, they go astray. It's so much better for you to just accept things for the reality and, and then work over time than to try to say, you know what? This is fine and I'm going to do it because that that's a whole different direction that you're heading. And that brings me to my second point, because although Islam and life in general is a marathon, it's also very short. So, I mean, right now, our brother Sneeko, I believe he's in his 20s, a new Muslim. But before you know it, five years passed, 10 years passed, 15 years passed. And things are different. I mean, your position in life is different. You know, inshallah, I'd imagine this brother, may Allah guide him to his best, is gonna find a wife. And inshallah, he finds a righteous Muslim sister to marry and they marry each other for the sake of Allah. And may Allah make him an excellent husband on his deen and may Allah grant him an excellent wife on her deen. And then they have children for the sake of Allah. When all that happens, he's gonna be in a completely different place in his life. Now it's not about him, you know, going to these family functions. That's not going to be like the, the main thing on his mind. Now he's, he's going to be worried about raising his children, taking care of his wife, 
And I'm sure, you know, inshallah, if he continues down this path of wanting to implement the deen and become more more practicing, he's not going to want to to take his his wife and his children to to Christmas celebrations. On the contrary, we tell our kids, no, Santa Claus isn't real. <laughs> you know, like these people, you know, all due respect to everyone out there. These people lie, lie to their children. They lie. You know, they tell them that there's this, you know, the Santa Claus, he comes down their chimney, he leaves them presents. And like, they, they lie to their kids. You know, and they attach it to, to what? To, to Isa, Isa and birthday. It's like when you explain, like you explain that to a child, you let them know. We take our deen seriously. We take Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Islam seriously. And what we celebrate is Eid. We have two Eids every year. And that's when, you know, we celebrate. We exchange gifts. The family comes together. And it's also an act of worship based on the truth. And the reality is, is not only do we want to implement Islam ourselves, but we also want our families to embrace Islam. Because at the end of the day, like we said, life is short. The only thing that's really going to matter in the hereafter is who, who is going to stand before their Lord on the day of judgment and enter Jannah for worshiping him alone, for following the guidance that he sent. That's what's going to matter. So now how do you go about doing that? How do you go about transitioning from being a non-Muslim who would go to all these holidays and so on and so forth to then becoming a Muslim and still trying to maintain those family ties but still let people know, look, I believe in Islam. This is the truth. I invite you to the truth. At the same time, Islam also teaches me to maintain my family ties. And that's sort of where the nuances come in. And I would say one of the best ways to deal with that is throughout the year, you reach out to your family, you call them, and you get to know them. And you, you tell them who you are and what you believe. And you can see who respects that. And you can see if somebody doesn't respect that. And if somebody doesn't respect that, I mean, what, you're, you're, you're going to compromise your dean for somebody that doesn't even respect you? Because there's a way to still maintain certain family ties and everyone respect one another. And when it comes to these family gatherings, one thing that can happen is, you know what? Based on my religion, I'm not going to be around certain things and I'm not going to bring my, my wife or my children around certain things. However, there are other times where we can come together. You know, you can invite them out on a even more regular basis, you know, to, to come together. You can you can give them gifts at any time during the year. Right. It's not it's not limited to these times. In fact, you could say that it's it's limited to to not doing it during some of those times because you don't want to partake in something that is against the religion. But inshallah, this is, you know, like I said, focus on progress rather than perfection. And may Allah help all of us and keep us firm. And, you know, we have an opportunity as people who embrace the Islam to bring up children, bring up future generations who are on the truth, who are on their deen. And that's something very important to focus on. And like I said, before you know it, years passed and inshallah, you might be in that sort of position. So may Allah keep all of us firm, all of our brothers and sisters who are embracing Islam firm on the truth. And may Allah guide us also to know how to deal with them. All of those who maybe we've been Muslim for many years, May Allah grant us the wisdom to know how to interact with them and have empathy and give good advice to them. Jazakumahu khairan and Allah knows best. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.